let's start with this one. Uh, this one is winter 2040. Starting with the first question. So uh, they've already given you the orders of the, of the uh, reactants. So one of them is two, the other one is one. So all you have to do is the order of the reaction with respect to endo that's uh, already written over here. The order with respect to O2 is one. So the overall order is three. Uh, two experiments are carried out at 30 centigrade to determine the rate of the forward reaction. And these are the two experiments. Use data for experiment one to calculate the value of the rate constant K. So can somebody help me and try and calculate? That? We already know what the what the rate equation is that's given above. That's uh, that's the rate is equal to k times n o squared, and o two is power one. Plug in the value for experiment number one, and uh, that's what they're asking for, and find the value of k. So what is what is k going to be? It's going to be what uh, rate 1.5 times 10 power minus 4 and that's going to be divided by n squared which is going to be point, uh, 0 0.003 squared and uh, o2 it would be power 1 so point double zero two. so tell me the answer for this and find the unit for K as well. Quickly, what do we get for K? 8333. Okay, so you're getting eight, uh, how many threes? Triple three. I mean, this thing? Yeah, that's what I find, I found. Okay. And the, and the unit is going to be what? Uh, the unit is going to be, uh, use the units that are already given. So it's, it's uh, mole per dm cube per second. So that's uh, rate. So x s minus one is equal to k times uh, mole per dm cube squared into mole per dm cube. So it's going to come out to be k would come out to be uh, x to the power minus two s minus one, or you can say mole per dm cube minus two. So mole minus two dm six and s minus one. That's your unit. So that's uh, that's about it. Calculate the value of NO concentration experiment two. So you found the value of k, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same rate equation and now I'm going to use experiment number two. I know what the rate is 6.05 into 10 to the power minus five. Uh, I know what uh, K is because I've already found that that's 833, 8,333. And uh, the NO concentration squared is not known. So that's my unknown that's squared. And uh, the O2 concentration is 0.005. So can anyone try and calculate this? What do you get for this? And then the whole thing needs to be under rooted. And let me check the MS as well. 1.2 times 10 power minus three. Let's just say one point two times ten power minus three. Yeah. Uh, just one second. Where's the so the first one is where's the where's the answer? Just a second. So over here it's coming out to be. I mean that's a separate question. Wait a second. This is which paper? This is uh, 
W twenty four three one second. Again, it's a different paper. One second. W twenty four three, right? Mm. Okay, that's four. So that came out to be eight C eight nine. Why is the value different? I'm using it. You're getting eight C C C. So why is that value coming out to be different? Uh, other than that, uh, Zeb, what was the other one? Should be. 1.2 that that came out to be fine there's nothing wrong with that one that's 1.2 times but why is the first one wrong i mean it's not that wrong it's just uh did we make a mistake somewhere six point everything looks fine uh sure you used 1.50 instead of 1.5 tiga so that's that's where the, i made the mistake so that's that's where the difference is so, anyways, that's uh, the first one. Okay. So that's that's where the error is. So let's move to the next one. You've got this reaction uh, saying, suggest, suggest equations for a two-step mechanism for this reaction, stating which of the two steps is the rate determining step. So you've got this question, and and the orders are already known. Remember, the order is one with respect to both of them, right? Now, you have to figure out two steps for this uh, mechanism. Now, you have to be creative. I mean, those two steps could be any steps. Now, forget the order for a second. Just make two steps. How could this reaction proceed in two steps? So, what do you think would happen in the first step? You have these reactants and you're trying to make this thing. So, what is going to happen in the first step? And remember, it's a redox reaction. Sulfur over here is has an oxidation state of, I think, uh, is it plus three? I mean, sulfur over here is plus three. And I is minus one. And mm -hmm. sulfur, sulfur over here is, I think, plus six. I mean, what, what is sulfur over here? That's, uh, that's minus eight. So plus six. So the plus three, right? I said, so... I'm going to, I'm going to make a, make up my own mechanism uh, and you have to be, be a bit creative about this. So see, you want to make S28 into 2SO4, right? So that could be your first step. Your second step would be I minus one turning into I2, right? Mm -hmm. Now let's say I start with S2, O8, 2 minus. And I want to convert it into SO4 to minus, right? Uh, so that means it has lost how many electrons? Uh, it's going from plus three to plus six. This, I think this is something wrong. There's something wrong over here. Is this, is this plus six? And what's the oxidation state over here? Okay. Uh, two sulfurs, so that's two X. Minus two times eight. I, I mean, this oxidation state is definitely wrong. Yeah. And the total charge is equal to minus two, right? So, uh, what does X come out to be? Minus eight. Minus sixteen goes to the other side. So that's plus sixteen minus two. So that's uh, what fourteen. You can can somebody do the math? And I mean, I'm, plus seven. Yeah, are we sure that it's plus seven? 2x minus 16 is equal to minus 2x minus 16. So I guess, I, I, I guess that is plus 7. Yes, sir. Plus 7. I see, plus 7. Yeah. that's plus 7. So that is plus 7. Um, my only issue at the moment is that this equation 
Okay, fine. Uh, it, it's it's balanced. It's balanced because there are two sulfurs. Uh, plus seven to plus six. That's a gain. Uh, that's a gain of uh, one electron. But there are two sulfurs, right? So that's a gain of two electrons because you've got two sulfurs and two sulfurs over here. I goes from minus one to zero. So that's a loss of uh, how many electrons? That's a loss of one electron. One electron. Uh, but you've got two eyes, so that's uh, a total loss of two electrons, right? So anyway, so so we figured out if you want to go from S two or two minus all the way to S four uh, two minus, uh, then what will happen is you will lose two electrons, right? You will gain two, gain two electrons, I think, right? So so the, it's going to it's going to gain two electrons. Now, where would it gain those electrons? Like those electrons are not just lying. So it's I minus one that's giving it those electrons. So I'm just making up a mechanism, see? So I'm just being creative. So who's giving it these two electrons? So I'm gonna take out, I'm gonna use I minus one. Let's say one of the I minus one gives S2O8 two minus one electron. Uh, so, what happens then if it gives it one electron? I mean, think of a mechanism, like think of an intelligent mechanism. S2 it uh, gives it one electron. So one of the sulfurs, let's say changes into SO4 minus, not both, one of them. Because remember, uh, sulfur go, one sulfur goes from plus seven to plus six, so it becomes SO4 minus two. The other one does not. So out of these two sulfurs, TK, just carefully listen to me, out of these two sulfurs, uh, I'm trying to break this mechanism into two steps. So I'm saying that one of the I minus ones, not both of them, I'm going to bring in the other I minus one in the next step. So one of the I minus one gives it one electron. So one of the sulfurs changes into SO4 minus two. So what is, what is left? What is left is going to be the other sulfur, right? And that's going to be SO4 as well, right? So this changes to plus six, but that other one still remains plus seven. So if it still remains plus seven and the oxygen is minus eight, right? So what is the overall charge on this thing? The overall charge of this on this thing is going to be minus one, right? Mm -hmm. So this other ion would be, let's say minus one. So listen to me carefully. What I'm, what I'm doing is, S2 weight, instead of gaining both electrons from I minus one in the first step, I'm giving it just one electron. If I give mm -hmm. it one, one electron, only one SO4 minus two is going to be produced, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the other one would maintain its oxidation state. So if it's plus seven and the oxygens are minus eight in total, so the overall charge on this thing is going to be minus one. I say an I minus one has lost an electron. So if it has lost an electron, it would be in the form of uh, I. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine I with this. So it's SO4, I with a charge of, so it's SO4, I with a charge of minus one. I mean, the whole thing has a charge of minus one. Uh, in the next step now, I don't look at, I mean, I don't really like the first step that I've made. Uh, now in the next step, the SO4 I minus one reacts with the other I minus one. That other I minus one also gives sulfur one electron. So sulfur goes from plus seven, sulfur over here is plus seven, right? Mm -hmm. So sulfur changes to plus six and it becomes SO4 minus two as well. And that I minus one also loses electrons and you get two iodines in this one. So again, this one is, I mean, you just have to be creative. You just have to make up a, a mechanism on your own. So uh, I just made this one up. Uh, and, and this one kind of makes sense. I mean, whatever the two steps that you divide this reaction into, it should make some sense. So, I mean, this one is kind of making some sense that S2 it initially only one of the I minus one reacts with it. Uh, the I minus one turns into iodine. 
loses one electron. So out of the two sulfurs, one of them sulfur, one of those sulfurs over here, sulfur was plus seven. So one of them changes into plus six. The other one remains as plus seven. So if it's plus seven and oxygen is minus eight, so the overall thing will have a charge of minus one. Iodine over here is zero because it has it has already lost electrons. And uh, in the next step, uh, the other I minus one comes. Say, yeah. Say, how did we guess these equations? I mean, how did we guess these equations? I mean, it's, I did it completely randomly. I mean, just okay, a, how did you pick them? Did you pick them from the data book? No, I didn't. I didn't. I, I'm just making them up. Like, it's just a wild guess. Uh, he's saying suggest equations. So, you know, I mean, the equations need not, I mean, it's not necessary that the equations are, are correct. As long as you just have to divide this in two steps. And you don't know what the mechanism is. So without knowing what the mechanism is, you're just going to try and make up some stuff, stuff up, right? So you're just making things up. Think is that clear? So, yeah, clear. But how did you, I mean, we added this S2 over it and it formed SO4 or SO4 yeah, I mean, minus one. I'm just okay. trying to break it into two steps. I saw two I minus one, right? Turning into I2. So what I did was I broke that up into two steps. I said that first one of the I minus one is going to give one of the sulfurs one electron, right? So one of the sulfurs, which is plus seven over here, right? Okay. It will turn into SO4 minus two where sulfur is plus six. Okay, is that clear? Okay. Okay. And what the baki sulfur in that remains plus seven, the other one. So if it remains plus seven, then the entire thing with four oxygens that will have a charge of minus one. Like if this is plus seven, this is minus two and iodine over here is zero because I'm, I'm saying that I is minus one and it has lost electron, right? Yeah. So the overall charge of this thing is minus one. Then the other I minus one comes in. This sulfur is plus seven, so I minus one comes in, gives it that one electron as well. So sulfur uh, changes into plus six. The other sulfur also changes into plus six. Uh, I minus one loses another electron. Now you've got two I minus ones losing electrons, so they would form I2. Is that clear? You're free to choose. You, I mean, you can contribute. Like, what what steps do you think should be there? I mean, it could it could basically be any step. So it depends which which one you start with. I mean, so you, you can you can make up anything in this case, uh, but I think that's that's the most feasible one that I've uh, that I can think of. And now you have to decide which one is the slow step. The only issue over here was that you had to keep track of the electrons as well. Like if you're dividing dividing it into two steps, you're going to keep uh, track of the electrons that are being lost and gained. Because you've got to you've got to do that as well. So, so that that is what's happening here. I said, now which one is the rate determining step? But uh, the order with respect to both of them is one. So it's it's going to be the first step. That's that's your slow step because rate would be dependent on this reactant and this reactant. So that's order one with respect to with respect to both of them. Think is that clear? Uh, okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So I'm, about making stuff up, right? Uh, like in this case, uh, I mean, this is something that you've already done, like uh, like a primary halogenoalkane, right? So if they talk about primary halogenoalkane and uh, there's a uh, there's a Cl, let's say there's CH two, Cl, and they're saying that it reacts with the OH minus one, and uh, it turns into CH three CH two. I mean, that's the overall reaction. And a Cl minus one is produced. 
So they might ask you to make two steps out of it. So what could be the two steps? I mean, just, just make an intelligent guess. The CL breaks up, breaks up in the first step. So it might, although this is not going to happen in this reaction mechanism, but I mean, if you're making things up, so it's fine if you're just making things up. So the CL minus one breaks off. And in the next part, uh, the OH minus one comes in and joins with it. So, so that's step one, that's step two. So it's just, you just have to like think of a, think of a, an intelligent step. Like how would you, how do you divide this reaction? As long as your order is met, like, uh, like they were saying that it's order one with respect to both of them. So this mechanism, but drawing this mechanism was slightly harder because you had to keep track of the electrons as well. I had to keep track of how many electrons are lost and how many are gained. Like if I minus one was losing one electron, so only one of the sulfurs, which is has an oxidation state of plus seven, was gaining one electron. So it was turning into plus six, right? The other sulfur was still plus seven. The iodine was now zero and the oxygen was minus eight. So the overall charge in this entire thing was minus one. In the next step, this other I minus one is also losing an electron. So this sulfur, which is plus seven, would then turn into plus six. And if the other I minus one also loses electrons, so you've got two iodines and they would get together to form I2. So, so just remember that it could be any random mechanism as long as the rate determining step, which is step number one. So this may in the first reaction job in the step one. So step one react uh, products gets uh, step two's reactant, right? Yeah. Plus for leftover, Bina, okay, in the first step, I did not use uh, one of the I minus ones. Uh, in the first step, there was only one I minus one involved. So I I brought in the other I minus one in the, in the step number two as well. Okay. okay. I said, I'm moving All on. Product? Hmm. A product, something could be even asked. I mean, is it our choice? Hey, at, the, at, the, at the end of the day, it has to be these two, nothing else. Oh, all, all intermediates that are formed must be used up eventually. One of the steps could produce one of the products in the for the original reaction, and the other step could produce the other product of the original reaction. Ah. Ah. Take it. Okay. Let's call example. Let's say I have uh, there's a reaction 2NO plus uh, Br2, and they're saying that uh, it ends up forming uh, NOBr2, right? So, sorry, 2NOBr. So, let's say I have this overall reaction. Now, there are many ways of writing this reaction. Like, what you can think of is Okay, the first step would be that the Br, Br2 molecule breaks up into radicals, right? And in the next step, the NO joins the Br and ends up forming NOBr. Is that clear? So, so that's, and to balance this, there should be two NO and two BRs, right? To form two NOBR. I mean, that's one way of thinking of uh, thinking about it. Um, mm. so the, the other one could be, uh, you could think of something else as well, like NO reacts with BR2, steals one of the BR, so it becomes NOBR. And a BR atom is produced. In the next step, another NO comes along. The BR that is produced in the previous step uh, reacts with it to form the other NOBR. So you can think of anything. There's no right and wrong about this as long as it makes uh, some sense. Um, and sir, the rate determining step, which one would be? Even though that depends on the order, TK, the rate equation was given, so we knew which one of us was slow step. Let's say the equation, we didn't match this. 
I said that it should match. Then that means your mechanism is wrong. You should think of another mechanism. Like in this case, I mean, I'm going to take this example. <laughs> so in this particular case, let's say the rate equation was that the rate was only dependent on BR2 concentration, right? So which one of the two mechanisms should I select? Because if I select any one of the of them as the slow step, the NO would be involved in the slow step. Is that clear? So you're never going to get this rate equation. But over here, if I choose the first one as the slow step, then my rate would only be dependent on the BR2 concentration. So, so this mechanism would actually match the rate equation. So, so it's not always true that, uh, uh, I mean, it's not that you can think of any mechanism and it's going to work. The mechanism has to be consistent with the rate equation. Seth, isn't the rate also dependent on NO in this case? Okay, let's assume the rate equation was given. And so according to the rate equation, it's not dependent on NO, right? So, so how, how so which which of the mechanisms should I choose? I, I made I made some two hypothetical mechanisms, right? One of them is this one, the other one is this one. Now, since it's not rate, the equation does not involve NO, then therefore I can't I can't choose this mechanism, the one over here. Because if I choose this as the slow step, the rate would be dependent on NO and BR2. If I choose this as the slow step, the rate would still be dependent on NO. So NO would be part of the rate equation. So, so this one is wrong, while this one is the correct one because it's consistent with the rate equation. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Uh, so, and, and, um, As a similarly, for example, um, in this case, uh, let's say they say that the rate is dependent on OH and concentration, right? And that's it. Now, then this mechanism that I've drawn is going to be incorrect. Why? Because if I take this as the slow step, the rate would not only be dependent on OH and concentration, but it would also be dependent on this carbocation. And the carbocation indirectly is dependent on the halogenoalkane. So the rate will not just be dependent on OH and concentration. So, so I would have to think of another mechanism. I would have to make up another mechanism. So just make sure that whatever mechanism you draw, it should be consistent with the rate equation that's given. And it's up to you to choose, uh, I mean, whatever mechanism you come up with as long as it makes some basic sense. Okay. So now the other part is you've got a large excess of peroxodiesulfate ions, which is mixed with iodide ions. Immediately after mixing under the conditions, use the half-life of I minus one is 48 seconds. Calculate the iodide ion concentration uh, 192 seconds after the peroxodiesulfate and iodide ions. So calculate the concentration after 192 seconds. So I minus one is order one. According to the rate equation over here, it's order one. So what is the half-life of order one? Is it constant throughout the reaction or does it increase or does it decrease? What happens to it, to an order one reaction? Will decrease. It's, remember the CMA four row. Constant. It remains constant. TK, it, uh, if you look at rate of reaction, I'll, I'll show you the three graphs. So remember, there's a method for measuring uh, the order with respect to the half-life method. So, so that is three graphs. Order zero means the rate is not dependent on the concentration of the, the reactant. So in this case, uh, if the graph slope, it remains constant. The rate of the reaction remains constant as the concentration decreases, the speed does not get affected. Order one, if the concentration drops, the reaction would slow down. So it's going to take a longer and longer time. In this case, the half-life is constant. Every time uh, it's going to take the same amount of time for the concentration to decrease by a half. And order two is that the half-life doubles every time. If the concentration decreases by half, the rate would decrease by one fourth. It's going to take a much longer time 
and it would slow down a lot more. So there are three orders, or in this case, mein, it's order one. So that means the half life is constant. So 48 seconds, right? That's the half life. So concentration decreases by half, right? In 48 seconds. What will happen in 96 seconds? It's going to decrease by another half. What's going to happen after another 48 seconds? What's another 48 seconds? That's 144, right? So the concentration would decrease by another half. So it's half cubed. And the last one would be if you go all the way up to 192 seconds, then the concentration, it's again 48 seconds. So the concentration would again decrease by, so it's half to the power of four, that's four half lives into the concentration of uh, iodide, which is 0 0.00. Is this clear? And you'll get your, so is this thing clear? Sir, Mr. Bob, four, um, why don't we just uh, divide this concentration on by four? Maybe by six, sir. Not six, it's uh, exponentially. This is, uh, it becomes half. Okay. And after another 48 seconds, it becomes half again. So that's half squared, right? And after another 48 seconds, it becomes the concentration decreases by half again. So it's another half. So it's half cubed now. And after another 48 seconds, it's going to be, you've halved it four times, right? So the Three quick formula, okay, one by, I mean, half life now. Oh, mother, it's simple math. Okay. Every time the concentration decreases by half. Next time the concentration decreases by, the half life would be constant. One. So it will become one fourth, right? Once the concentration is one four, it's going to decrease by another half. So what is the half of one by four? That's one by eight, right? So okay, fourth half life will be, which is this one. Fourth half life would be one by 16, right? Is that clear? So what do you, what do you get for this? Four point nine into ten to the power minus four. So we're getting four point nine into ten to the power minus four. TK, so just don't use divide by four. This is an exponential term. Every time it's becoming half. So you have to halve it four times. Always is half to the power of four. And uh, let me just check what the answer is over here. This is a constant. Okay, you are. Achha, you ordered one kilo. Okay. Ah. Okay. The time taken is constant, but it's a curve, right? It's it's basically exponential. I mean, it's first time it's getting halved, then it's getting halved mm -hmm. again. That's one by four. Then it's getting halved again. That's one by eight. If you halve it again, that's one by sixteen. And half. Okay. So it's going to be one by sixteen. As a, anyways, next one, you've got, uh, define the term lattice energy, so it's the energy that is uh, released. When one mole of solid ionic lattice is formed from its gaseous, constituent gaseous ions. As I explained, well, lattice energy of calcium oxide is more exothermic than LIF. So why do you think calcium oxide has a, has a higher lattice energy compared to LIF? Greater charge density. That's that's the only only reason. It's It has greater charge density. And... Uh, it's a one mark question, so you don't have to go into, even though this is smaller in size. Which one is smaller in size? I'm pretty sure, I mean, this is smaller in size. 
lithium yeah. lithium has two shells uh it doesn't even have two shells actually it's uh needs got two shells calcium has four shells so lithium has three electrons so that so basically the iron will have one shell calcium will have three shells so according to the size this should have been stronger but uh, according to the charge this ionic lattice is going to be stronger so not really uh, sh and they did write explain so i'll just quickly check this one that uh, they just talked about higher charge density that's about it so you don't have to go into a lot of detail about this i said the other one use the data in the table to estimate approximate values for the lattice energy of magnesium oxide and barium oxide so you've got you've got calcium oxide right and you've got to approximate right do we have calcium oxide by the way as a calcium oxide is given over here that's minus 3513 uh so you've got mg you've got ca you've got sr and you've got pa so the ionic radiuses are increasing the charges remain the same the ionic radius is increasing so so they're talking about mgo and bao so mgo is it going to be higher than this or lower than this is it going to be a stronger lattice the first one or, or a weaker lattice compared to calcium a stronger lattice because okay. it's smaller 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 ions they always make a stronger lattice because the charge is not a factor over here because all of them have plus two charges so so charge it's it's charge density that's the entire diff term that should be used but but the charge is constant so it's smaller ions are going to make stronger lattice so so i'm just going to give it a value i'm going to call this minus 37 50. What about barium? Barium is going to be the weakest, right? So let's make that minus 3000. Uh, SRO is minus 3310. And calcium is minus 3513. Uh, write an equation uh, for the reaction of barium uh, oxide with water. That's uh, it's a very soluble oxide. So it's going to mix with water to form barium hydroxide aqueous. I'll write down the states as well. This is solid, liquid, and aqueous. State explain how the solubility of the hydroxides of two elements vary down the group. So that's a your know, typical four mark question. First thing, solubility uh, it decreases. It increases down the group. it increases down the group i mean barium hydroxide is very soluble but magnesium hydroxide at the top is not very soluble so that means the enthalpy of solution becomes more exothermic when you move down the group so what happens when you move down the group uh, it becomes uh, so down the group Ionic radius increases. So it becomes easier to break the lattice. Radiation decreases faster than lattice. And uh, the so, so, so lattice energy, the uh, first thing is lattice energy and enthalpy of hydration. That's true. They both decrease. So lattice energy or the negative of lattice energy is you're breaking the lattice, right? And once the lattice is broken, uh, the ions will get surrounded by water molecules, right? So both lattice energy and enthalpy of hydration would decrease because uh, bigger ions, they don't form very strong bonds. Or Akhri's statement, okay, because it's becoming exothermic, so but enthalpy of hydration decreases less. Um, Sir, your voice is breaking off. Yeah, let me see. I said, can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. I said, so this one. Uh, enthalpy of hydration decreases less compared to compared to lattice energy. So what, what is basically happening is that down the group, 
dissolving becomes easy. First thing is when you're dissolving something, you have to break the lattice. The positive and negative ions, they're all sticking together, right? In an ionic lattice. So it becomes easier to actually break the lattice. So lattice energy decreases more. It becomes easier to break the lattice. And stronger bonds with water are formed. So a lot more energy is released when you uh, form, when, when you hydrate the ion. So down the group, ionic radius increases. So both lattice energy and enthalpy of hydration both decrease, but the hydration decreases less or is relatively bigger in size compared to lattice energy, which is why enthalpy of solution becomes more exothermic. So again, this is a question that appears in every paper. So make sure you remember this. I mean, it's not easier to actually memorize this. As I'm moving to the next one. Do you get, remember, it's, this one is a very typical question that comes in every paper. Uh, you have to draw the bond neighbor cycle for, I think, MGF2. So you might also use the data to figure out what, figure out the lattice energy of magnesium fluoride. So, so I'm going to start with the uh, formation. Uh, what is formation? That's uh, Mg plus F2, the elements turning into MgF2. Now that one is a solid, this one is a gas, and this one is also a... And this uh, entire thing is uh, enthalpy of formation. That's minus one, one, zero, two. What are the next steps? Uh, the other route could be that I atomize Mg into a gaseous atom and I atomize fluorine into a gaseous atom. The atomization of Mg is given and that's plus 147. While I'll have to break the FF bond, the F2 bond needs to be broken. So how much energy is required for that? Uh, that can be found in the data booklet. So in the bond energy section, you're going to find this value, which is uh, so about FF, that's 158, that's given over here. So, you, so you're going to break the FF bond, that's uh, 158. What is the next part? The next part is you're going to ionize them. MG is going to lose electrons, two of them. And then the two fluorines will gain electrons, two of them. So that's the that's the electron affinity of fluorine, which is 348 minus 348. So it's minus 348 into two. Because fluorine over here is gaining two electrons. Uh, Mg is losing two electrons as well. So you, you can look it up in the data booklet. So over here, you'll find uh, Mg's ionization energy. One is 736, the other one is 1450. Sir, your sound is breaking again, sir. Achha. You still can't hear me? Hello? Sir, I have your bar. The bar glitched very bad. Achha. No, now something is wrong, okay? Sir, I I'll try and the internet looks fine. But uh, I said, let me know if, if it's still glitching. Okay? So, so I, I was just constructing the bond neighbor cycle. This is enthalpy of formation. And I was atomizing the uh, the elements turned them into atoms. Mg solid to gaseous atom that's given over here, 147. Fluorine, to turn it into an atom, I would have to break the fluorine fluorine bond, that's 158. Then I'm going to ionize this. The electron affinity of fluorine was given, that's uh, 348, that's into two. And Mg was losing two electrons, so that's 736 uh, plus 1450 again from the data booklet. And then this part over here is your lattice energy. Yeah, that's that's your lattice energy and uh, they were asking you to calculate the lattice energy that's what they're asking for 
So one part is equal to the other part. So you're going to, this is one part, that's your other part. So that means minus 11, 11, 0, 2 is equal to this entire path, which is uh, plus 147, plus it's 158, plus it's minus 348 into two, plus it's 736 and 1450. And then it's uh, the lattice energy, which is plus LE. So make LE the subject of the equation and tell me what the value is. You can be very careful with the signs and the calculations in this case. Did anyone try this? What's the answer? So did anyone uh, so, so you got uh, what uh, minus two eight nine seven? You get for this one. So this one is minus two eight nine seven, and uh, let's just check the answer. Double check that one. It's minus two eight nine seven. So that's fine. So remember, this is just a standard bond neighbor cycle. Defer, define the term electron affinity. So it's the opposite of ionization energy. It's the energy uh, that is uh, absorbed or evolved. Remember, electron affinity can be positive, it can be negative as well. So it's evolved when one mole of electrons electrons are gained by one mole of gaseous atoms. To form one mole of gaseous minus one ions. Uh, yeah, we we'll, we'll just check the definition as well. Uh, so you have to write this thing that uh, one mole of gaseous atoms, they turn into ions. No, oh, that's it. I mean, that's about it. So you could have skipped the last part. Uh, the electron affinity of carbon is minus 120. So just an explanation for the difference between the electron affinity of fluorine and the electron affinity of carbon. So what's the difference? Like carbon is minus 120. Fluorine is way more, it's like three times more uh, exothermic. So why is carbon gaining electron less exothermic? And fluorine gaining electron is way, I think it was 348. So why is that? Because chlorine itself is uh, electronegative, so it needs greater energy to attract an electron. Okay, so something, something uh, of the, of, so there's strong attraction for electrons. It releases more energy. Like if there's a fluorine atom and there's an electron, so the fluorine atom would pull that electron, it will do all the work itself. So there's going to be a lot of kinetic energy created because fluorine is going to be pulling an electron from some really far off place because fluorine has a very stronger attraction for electrons. Why? Because it's got more nuclear charge, right? Uh, they give you a lot of lines. They have the same shielding. So there's a lot more attraction for electrons. So we'll just check. Uh, it's got greater nuclear charge, more protons, there's greater attraction. Uh, so which is why? fluorine would be the one that would be doing a lot of work. 
when it's pulling an electron from it can be pulling that electron from some other atom so it, it will do all of that work and that's why a lot of energy is going to be released is that clear yes sir. so then you have uh Tariqa, let's let's continue with the same paper Tariqa. let's continue tomorrow then so yeah Good afternoon. Okay. Take care, last lesson.